So this here is the beginning of what will be next year's passion fruit food forest. In front of me, I've got about 20 cuttings that we basically gave away in our September. This is our first annual passion fruit cuttings that we're giving away with your order of the six macros plus super or premium blend fertilizers, the 11.8 ounce bag. So the smaller bags of fertilizers are currently marked off significantly. They're marked off at 50% off and they include two passion fruit cuttings with each order. And the rest of the Ivory Organics product line is available to you at 20% off for our end of summer sale. So be sure to take advantage of that. What we're gonna do today is up pot, as they call it, one of the passion fruit cuttings together. When we started with our passion fruit cuttings, and for those of you that have participated in the passion fruit cutting giveaway, you may have noticed that the passion fruit was climbing and growing all the way down this wall. In fact, it was once climbing on these overhead lights. So if you wanna take a look real quick, you can see that the lights that I've got overhead were once supporting our passion fruit vine, but the original structure, we had since improved the supporting structure with a wire reinforced trellis, which can now probably support the fruit. In an earlier lesson, we weighed the fruit to weigh an approximately two ounce each, and when you've got hundreds of fruit up there, that weight adds up. So make sure you've got a good structure for supporting your passion fruit vines. And another helpful tip is that once these passion fruit vines root, you can expect growth in the first year of about 10 to 20 feet, and then followed by about 20 to 40 feet per year thereafter. So these are very fast growing vines, and in warmer climates, these provide evergreen privacy. So if you have a chain link fence, this is an awesome way to get that privacy and take advantage of some amazing and delicious fruit. As I've been pruning away, these are some of the fruit that have been coming off the vine. This here is now ripe, and this one will be ready in about a couple of days. These should not have come off the vine, but there is just some branches I had to get in my efforts for the giveaway. Before we up put, let me just quickly share with you how I prepared the cuttings before they went into the soil. So we, what we did was, We took cuttings like this and we trace it. And just to let you know what's top and bottom, you can see that this is the leaf and within it is the node. And sometimes the leaves are in reverse position. And again, depending on if it's growing in the down direction or if it's growing in the up direction, but within the leaf, you'll find the leaf node. And it's usually out of the node that you'll find the vine, which we can cut that off. And here's another tendril, also known as the vine, that's coming out of that node, and another one. And we're cutting them out because it's taken away from resources and we don't really need it grabbing onto anything at this point. The main focus is, let's get rooted. Now we're cutting the leaves in half. The reason for cutting the leaves in half is to reduce the loss of moisture. And I'm going to decide to basically make a shorter cutting. So I'm bringing it down. Most of the cuttings are about six to eight, maybe 10 inches. What I'm doing is now cutting at an angle at that node, like so, removing the lower leaf and then scarring the bottom part of the stem, like so. And the reason I scarred it was to increase surface area to help with absorption of water. And it'll be most likely the location where most of the roots are going to come out. I'm then putting it into a, this here it says Schultz take root growth hormone. The main thing with this powder that I'm putting on it and all of the cuttings include this powder that's going on there. And again, it's two cuttings per 11.8 ounce bag of the six macros plus fertilizer, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a second. And what we then did is we prepared our potting mix. And so with most of our cuttings here, my preferred way for preparing the cutting is to put them into plastic containers like so and the clearer the plastic the better because it's easy to you know indicate whether or not there's root growth happening within the pot i'm running low on plastic cups we reuse some of the plastic from events and so forth um, that we can get our hands on as you can see here with this plastic cup this is a lot harder than some of the plastic cups i've used before but what i'm trying to do with each of these plastic cups and what I've done with the other ones is I'd usually try to 
notch out a corner as I did over here. And this actually will suffice um, for our purposes. And then for our potting mix, what we did is we used a blend of vermiculite, which looks like bulls gold right here. And it's a little damp. And then we've also got some perlite, which looks like this. And what I've been doing is just taking a couple of handfuls of the perlite with a couple of handfuls of the vermiculite. And the goal is to create like a 50-50 potting mix. And we've been using this mixture to fill up our pots. The reason we did not add peat moss, also known as sphagnum peat moss, and you can see what that looks like here, is because it's organic in the sense that it's going to break down. Vermiculite and perlite are mineral based and won't break down and won't contribute to, and this is the main issue, is stem rot. We don't want the cutting to rot. And that's actually one of the main reasons for using a rooting powder is not just the fact that it's got rooting hormones in there, but it also inhibits and prevents mildew and rot from happening at the side of the cutting. So we're putting our cutting in like that. We're adding a little bit of pressure around the stem like so. And then we simply go with our watering can and we water only the first time from the top, but the rest of the time, we're gonna be watering from the sides. As you can see, we've got a watering tray and all of these pots are dripping wet, as you can see. But again, it's only that bottom part of the container that's wet and the top is dry and allowing a lot of air activity to happen. And that's what's keeping the cutting hydrated and off to a good start. What we're also doing every single time that we visit the cuttings, whether it be morning, afternoon, or evening, or even up to five times a day or more, is once the leaves are dry, we're just simply going with some water and spraying the leaves like so. For our brand new cuttings, we would spray the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. And the main goal with this product right now, and let me actually spray it on there, is that we're helping with transpiration. We're basically helping the plant. Here's our newest cutting, so we'll spray that. But what we're doing is we're helping against transplant shock, and we're also helping to reduce and minimize the loss of moisture through the leaves. If you take a, a close look over here, you can see it kind of has a film that looks like milk, but the product, as you can see here, is for use in organic production and healthier than latex paint and tar-based products. I've got a pamphlet over here, if we take a look, for the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, and it reads over here, some of the benefits of the 3-in-1 Plant Guard is sun, insects, and rodents, as a sunscreen against summer sunburn, winter sun scald, premature blooms, prune and grafted wounds, anti-transplant, this is the main focus that we're using for our cuttings right now, is increasing cloning success and reducing transplant shock, for your insects, it's protecting the leaves um, against you know damaging critter, critters that could be biting, chewing, or sucking on those leaves. Prune trees, damage bark, bulbs, time release, and for as a rodent repellent for girdle trees, and again for bulbs and time release. The bulbs, the idea is to basically coat and protect your bulbs before planting, but you'd want to use something a little bit thicker, such as this product over here. And this can, which is the pint-sized can, can make up to 20 to 25 spray bottles or up to five gallons as you can see over here with the foliar spray makes a five gallons of ready to use spray can also be used as a brush on direction so we got foliar spray and then tree paste right there depending on how much water you add and you can see that it's armory listed for organic use again the ivory organics three in one plant guard so within three to six weeks your cutting should begin to root. If you take a look over here, I'm just spinning it around. If you've got a clear container, you can see the roots starting to um, grow out there. If we turn it upside down, you can see a lot more roots happening. So we've got success. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna up pot these passion fruit cuttings to a larger container. What we're also gonna do within the next week, and again, if you're this close and you've got a structure, I would encourage putting it in the ground, especially if you're in a warmer growing zone, such as we are here in Los Angeles, and the reason being is if I can get in the ground and get it to hopefully grow another foot or two before the end of the growing season, then come spring, we can expect, like I said earlier, about 10 to 20 feet of growth in the first year. And with it, naturally, flowers and hopefully fruit as well. And we're going to do that together 
with within the next week. So be sure if you have not already subscribe and stay tuned, hit that push bell notification so you can see our next um, lattice structure that we're going to construct that in my opinion is the best. And I'll kind of give a tour of all the different things that we've done over the years in regards to successes and failures. So stay tuned for that in regards to creating that lattice structure. But if you're ready to put it in the ground, I would recommend once you see roots, stick it in the ground, find that ideal sunny location. Some shade is okay, um, but the more sun, the better. And we're gonna talk about lattice structures, like I said, within a week. But in the meantime, I'm gonna up pot this one. You can see with all of these cuttings that I've got behind me, only one or two are gonna land on my property. The rest of them are usually um, given to other family and friends that come and visit. So what we're gonna do here today is prepare now the soil that's gonna go into the larger pot that we're gonna graduate it into. And now, in addition to the vermiculite perlite mix, we're gonna be adding now one third peat moss. This is our first time we're adding something that is going to break down and return minerals to the soil. And as the peat moss breaks down, that's also gonna feed your plant. So what we're gonna do now is add a little bit of soil to the base. And what I'm gonna do here next is I'm gonna take the fertilizer. And this here is the six macros plus. The super blend has got the highest NPK, meaning you can use a lot less of it. This is, I would say double or triple the average organic fertilizer that's on the market in regards to high percentage NPK. And then also has magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. Hence the name six macros plus. It has all the macronutrients that plants need, unlike pretty much all the fertilizers that are out there that focus only on NPK or maybe NPK plus calcium or NPK plus magnesium. But, but this was specifically derived to give your plants all of the macronutrients in addition to a lot of the micronutrients as well, which include iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and boron. And you can see that also has a lot of beneficial microbes and mycorrhiza as well. So I'm gonna introduce some of this product. And again, it doesn't take much to start building that network with the mycorrhiza spores and the roots, but you can see I'm just sprinkling a little bit near the base of the plant. And now we're gonna take our vine and this here is gonna stimulate the roots to keep on growing and to create that network with all that soil life that we're creating. And here again are those roots. And I'm gonna allow these two to continue living together like so. And now let's continue backfilling the soil around it. And now we're gonna put a little pressure around the vines to eliminate any air pockets that may exist around the plant. I'm gonna dress the surface one more time with just a little more fertilizer so that as I water, all of those elements will work their way into the soil and all the beneficial life within the product will start networking that soil as well. And now the last thing to do, water. We're also gonna take, again, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard, predominantly for that protection against sunburn, even though we're currently in the shade. And this here is gonna also help with transplant shock as well. And you can see that layer of protection that we've got on the plant. If you're doing any foliar feeding or if you're gonna continue missing the plant occasionally as it gets um, settled over the next day or two, that would be fine. And again, this product dries on porous, so you can foliar feed through the product. Once you've applied this product to the leaves, it'll protect the plant for about three to nine months. If there's any new growth that you're concerned about with summer heat waves or, or in the winter with wind burn, um, you can also protect the leaves and all of that new growth that's unprotected as well um, to offer that additional protection with the Ivory Organics product. So this was your helpful tip on up potting your passion fruit cuttings. The helpful tip, start with a mineral based soil such as perlite or vermiculite or a combination of the two. 50-50 is what we did for our mix successfully. And when you go to up pot your plant, that potting mix can now incorporate compost or a sphagnum peat moss, which will break down and continuously enrich the soil between waterings. For those of you out there that are interested in getting your hands on a passion fruit cutting, it's only while supplies last. Here we are now on this September 16. And you can see again, for those of you that have been watching me since the beginning, this wall was covered in passion fruit vines. As you can see, there's only 
less than half of this plant remaining against the wall. I'll continue pruning and I'll even go up a little closer to the vine to hopefully fulfill as many more of these orders. There's a parent plant around the corner. We've also cut that down by almost 50% as well along the way. I'm just trying to get as many grow tips as possible. At this point, there's very few, even though I was able to demonstrate in today's lesson, a grow tip um, being the end of the vine. Most of what is gonna be going out now are gonna be the central part of the vine. And if we take a look here on my tray, you can see the difference between the grow tips over here as we did today. This here is one of the grow tips and I'm trying to see other grow tips that have probably grown, but almost all of mine are um, center parts. This here is a grow tip I did yesterday and you can see it's a little sad looking today, but chances are we've had success that are in the high 90%. And so I feel confident that it's gonna rebound between today and tomorrow. But you can take a look at the central stem cuttings. And this is more of what you can expect is you're gonna get your stem and then the growth will come out at the node of each of those leaves. And here's another example, um, probably without the growth, and eventually those will grow out as well. And all of these leaves are have got rooting hormone on them. All of them have been pruned um, with the leaves in half so that they don't dry out by the time you get them situated and potted at home. If you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and push bell notification to stay tuned of these lessons as soon as they become made available. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.